a 6,500 and some videos. I thought I'd already made a video about this topic, but I had not. 6,500 videos covers a lot, but it doesn't cover everything, obviously, and logically so. Someone recently brought up the question about antimatter. And it's like, you know, I just realized I, I hadn't made a video about that. Um, once again, it's incredibly important to have a primer in your head to understand Mother Nature. Without a primer, nobody understands anything. The best so-called scientists and physicists haven't got a clue about anything. I grew up reading and looking through their books, and I knew they were completely full of it. They can't define a field. They can't define energy. They absolutely can't. I don't mean that in a figurative sense. I actually can't. You actually have to have, like I said, a primer to understand things. So understanding so-called antimatter, which is a misnomer. You want to talk about a misnomer to call it antimatter? As ridiculous as uh, calling scalar waves scalar waves. Uh, Nikola Tesla's uh, death ray, as he called it, is uh, scalar wave energy. But the problem with calling it scalar wave energy is that it has no wave component. <laughs> It's actually longitudinal, and it's measured in uh, volts per second instead of a frequency or wavelength. So something that has no wave component, calling it scalar wave. So antimatter is not the opposite of matter. Let's uh, get on to that a second. Let's uh, first uh, give a little quote from Nikola Tesla, who said that if you want to find the secrets of the universe, you need to think in terms of energy, frequency, and vibration. Of course, frequency and vibration kind of mutually redundant there. We're talking about oscillation or vibration. We can refer it to frequency, which is a oscillation, or vibration, and a vibration, of course, has a frequency. So Nikola Tesla himself was a little bit redundant there. He should have just said, you need to think in terms of uh, energy and oscillation, and uh, that's true. And uh, ironically enough, like I said, no branch of science has ever defined the term energy. They have no idea. Nihil ex nihilo is something that they enjoy, and if you don't know what nihil ex nihilo is, you should look it up. It means from not comes not. Um, but uh, let's uh, get on to uh, what antimatter is not and discuss what actually antimatter is. There's no such thing as antimatter, which of course would be the opposite of matter. It's inverse. Um, it's an inverse of what we conventionally call matter, of course, which is uh, um, a harmonic, like an upper side band or lower side band, actually produced from galactic jets. We also, too, call these astrophysical jets. It's actually a super fascinating phenomenon. Everybody should look up galactic jets or astrophysical jets. We have countless thousands of observances of uh, astrophysical jets or galactic jets being emitted from the centers of galaxies and from the centers of black holes. And it is literally, I don't know if you've, and I have a, a gyroscope here, but I'm not going to spin up a gyroscope. You know, this apple shape is essentially a toroidal shape, and around this toroidal shape, we actually have geromagnetic precession, also, too, called the Lemur frequency, but we actually see these geromagnetic uh, precessional jets emitting out trillions and trillions of tons of hydrogen from uh, the centers of galaxy. We, there's thousands of photographs, real photographs of this. There are people that actually always leave comments. So oh, that's not real. It's like, oh, really? So... Dozens of different countries with thousands of pictures of these astrophysical jets are not real. Of course, they're real. Anyway, they're emitting out uh, trillions and trillions of tons of hydrogen, which is nothing other than super high energy light. And of course, all atoms, all um, atoms are just compounds of hydrogen. And uh, we know for a fact one thing that science is right about. You know, accurate observational declarations. Of course, we have to enjoy them and agree with them. Uh, however, descriptions are not explanations. That all free neutrons, given about 17 minutes, turn into protons. This means a neutron is nothing other than a uh, frequency abstraction of a proton. So there's only one fundamental particle. The, the notion of an electron, of course, does not exist, and that's not my view or my position. It's the view or position of Nikola Tesla, James Kirk Maxwell, Oliver Heaviside, and the so-called discoverer of the principle of the electron, who's J.J. Thompson. J.J. Thompson actually said the electron, not a particle, is one unit of dielectric induction. Accurate, precise, demonstrably and denotatively accurate. So there's only one fundamental particle. So um, Let's uh, read a passage from the LHC, the Large Hadron Collider. Now, of course, all their conclusions are incorrect, but I'm going to make a, a, a reading of uh, their declaration. On antimatter, the team uh, led by physicists from Oxford University analyzed data from the LHC and discovered that a subatomic particle, meaning a proton, can switch between matter and antimatter. You see, we have this idea that 
and to say antimatter is like uh, say what's the opposite of God? We'd uh, in an abstraction, the opposite of God would be Satan. He's the complete antinomy. You know, they're uh, mutually destructive. Not literally, but I mean, the notion of antimatter is the opposite of matter is uh, completely ridiculous. There's no such thing as antimatter, nor is there any such thing as scalar waves. The phenomena, of course, is true, but it has no wave component. So antimatter is uh, not antimatter. It's just constructive and destructive interference. a spatial phase harmonic in all binary systems. Let me repeat that again. Upper side band, lower side band. I don't know if you know much about radio. For communication, we have upper side band, lower side band communication. They're just spatial harmonics. They are out of phase and therefore mutually destructive. The exact same way we actually have the dual slit experiment. We have constructive and destructive interference from light. But people love, and there's nothing better. And I keep getting so many thousands of questions about uh, uh, the dual slit experiment. And you can actually recreate that using the shaft of a needle, of course, and you can recreate it using laser light or incoherent light. And they say, well, it did just. There's an observer effect, and you know we don't, you know, uh, don't know how this works. Well, it starts out with the false supposition that light's an emission, light has a speed, light's a particle and a wave, and a wave particle duality, and all these things are incorrect. Yet we all suffer from that delusion. Humanity does. If aliens were to land tomorrow, they would actually facepalm themselves over the fact that all of humanity thinks that light is an emission and a particle and a wave particle duality, and it has a speed and it's moving from point A to point B, when none of that's the case, actually hysteresis, the ether, or specifically the rate of induction for it to occur is the reason why Nikola Tesla said that light can be nothing other uh, than a sound wave in the ether. Because sound is not an emission. We actually suffer the same delusions about sound as we do from light. We know of a speed of sound. We can talk about breaking the sound barrier, but sound is not an emission because everybody, when you say speed of sound, you say speed of light. Every human being on this earth suffers the delusion that something is moving from point A to point B. Well, anything that has a speed is moving. You know, it's going from mia to mia. And that's not the case. It's the rate of induction. Sound is not an emission at all. It is a perturbation of the air, you know, caused by my voice, the vibration of oxygen and nitrogen. The actual speed of sound changes on elevation, not the density of the air, how cold or hot it is, which is also too about density of the air. There are many things that actually affect the speed of sound, but sound is not an emission. It has a speed, it has to be an emission. It's traveling. Well, the perturbation, yes, is occurring, just like a person in the middle of a pond flapping their arms is causing perturbations in the pond, but they themselves are not emitting anything. Every little kid on this earth, including every adult, suffers a delusion that when they flip the light switch that a light emits light. It's emitting light! Superficially and conventionally, that of course is accurate, but it's ultimately incorrect. The light bulb doesn't emit anything. The speed of light is the rate of induction or the hysteresis of the ether. So, Anyway, we're talking about constructive and destructive interference. The notion of antimatter is incorrect. Just as we call scalar waves, Scalar wave, which they have no wave component, it's completely illegitimate. Instead of calling it antimatter, I've actually thought, and of course I haven't come to any conclusion on what to accurately call it. We could call it um, uh, lower sideband matter, or we could call it uh, inverse phase matter, rel relative to conventional matter. And um, the collision between matter and so called antimatter is undeniable. Um, Subatomic particles of been collided in the LHC and other places. So we know antimatter does exist. We've actually seen these explosions in deep space. Antimatter does exist, but it's completely incorrect to call it antimatter. It's nothing other than inverse phase matter. We shouldn't call it antimatter because that develops in our mind, human beings' minds, things that are incorrect. Speed of sound and speed of light infers that something is traveling. Well, nothing is traveling. It's a disturbance of the medium. Antimatter infers that it is the inverse or the antichrist of matter, for example. You know, it's like, it's darkness, you know? Like, we'd have matter as light and antimatter as darkness, and, well, darkness doesn't exist. <laughs> By the way, darkness is uh, just like time and space and shadows and emptiness. Uh, uh, there's seven primary things that don't exist that human beings think do exist. It doesn't exist at all. A shadow is an absence of light. So 
We can't have this notion that antimatter is like the shadow of light. When they collide, they mutually destroy each other. Well, antimatter is just matter that is out of phase. We could call it lower sideband matter, which is kind of an abstraction. Or we could call it inverse phase matter. And it is no different than the constructive and destructive interference you see in the, the supercell or the ferro cell I have over here behind my shoulder, which I have a thousand videos of. No different than constructive and destructive interference actually seen in the dual slit experiment, which is everybody is so confused about. So it's just upper sideband and lower sideband polar harmonics of matter. Okay? And um, I get on to light here. I meant to talk about light itself being a binary coaxial circuit. I was talking about binary systems. I'm going to get onto this as the last mention in this video in uh, relation to constructive and destructive interference. We're talking about spatial phase harmonic in all binary systems. A black hole is a binary system. It's geomagnetic precessional and galactic jets or astrophysical jets. Look up those on a Google search, astrophysical jet or galactic jets. So a black hole is a binary system. And calling it a black hole is also too a misnomer. It's not a hole and it's not black. It is a super dielectric system that has enormous mass but no magnitude because dielectricity has overthrown its capacity to stay within the visible universe. It is literally brink, blinked out of our, our Cartesian cosmos. It's extremely simple, actually. Mother Nature is divinely simple, but nobody could understand Mother Nature and natural order without a primer. The most important thing anybody could have in their head if they want to understand Mother Nature, and it's say Mother Nature, Natura, Natura, I don't care what anybody calls it, God, Mother Nature, I don't really care. You have to have a primer. Without that primer, understanding is impossible. Um, light itself, of course, is a binary coaxial circuit. It's a binary system, just like a black hole is. This is the reason why we actually see constructive and destructive interference between matter and so-called antimatter, which is also, too, just matter. Uh, so light is this coaxial circuit, which can be mutually constructive or destructive, as we, we can see in thousands and millions of experiments. And this constructive or destructive interference is relative to the other light's perturbation and where it is at relational to the coaxial interference of other light that it comes into contact with, i.e. other disturbances. We could actually see this mutual cancellation or mutual uh, addition in uh, two people in a pond you know, flapping their arms and generating waves, you'll actually see constructive and destructive interference depending on the harmonic of the time and the location of interference. So that's all antimatter is. It's not antimatter at all. It is inverse phase, or you could call it lower sideband matter or inverse phase matter. That would be demonstrably and denotatively accurate, but antimatter, antimatter is a misnomer. Just the scalar waves are a misnomer. You shouldn't call it scalar waves. Because it has no wave component. <laughs> That's something else that doesn't exist either. There's many things that human beings think exist. Um, emptiness, shadows, uh, time, um, waves. There's all these things that human beings you know, believe in that don't actually exist. So. They are not principles in themselves. The shadow is an absence of light. It's a qualifier and it's said in reference to something else, not a thing in itself. It has no esse or essence. So anyway, I hope you liked this video. I hope I kept it uh, simple, short and sweet, which is what I like to do rather than drone on and on and on. Usually I'll not say enough and people's like, I wish you said more about that. Or I'll say too much and people's like, you said too much. You could have said all that in five minutes. So you can't make anybody happy. You either don't say enough or you, you talk a lot about it, and people say, oh, man, it took you too, <laughs> took you forever to talk about it. You could have summed it up quicker. So, nobody can be pleased. <laughs> Thanks. Goodbye.